then I started the recording now. So welcome everyone to our Chaos Hangout. As always, we have no agenda, so any topics that are on your mind are welcome. Who wants to go first? Is that a loaded question? I know Matt uh, Matt has uh, early meetings today, so he may be showing up a little bit late, uh, but he did want me to share uh, that uh, as of today, I think the uh, the risk work group is getting started uh, based on the uh, the outcome at uh, ChaosCon uh, during that lightning talk, uh, Matt Snell and uh, Matt German Prey uh, are, are Putting together the uh, the risk work group, and they have started actively working on it uh, today. That's awesome. So, do they have a repository? Do you know details? Uh, I do not know details. I know that they are they're looking to uh, take a bit of code from uh, the Fossology project, uh, and I believe they are wanting to. Uh, contribute some of that code to uh, Augur. Uh, so it's specifically around uh, licenses, right? Uh, but right. I, I really I really don't know uh, any specifics on it. All right. I'm sure they will send us an email updating us. So that's exciting. On the diversity and inclusion work group, Danielle and I have a tutorial at Open Source Summit Europe. And so we started working on, yes, thumbs up, working on uh, preparing the, um, the, the program and handouts and so on, which then we also contribute back to the project because we think these are helpful for um, anyone else because we want these to be hands on. And so, yeah, that's what we are working on. Yeah, yeah. just to mention, Georg, that uh, uh, what we are trying to do is to create some uh, templates, some cards for each of the categories we have. So, uh, as this is going to be a tutorial, anyone can, can follow us in each of the goals or questions that we are uh, going to discuss there. So uh, the idea is that we will focus on a couple of um, topics or main categories. Uh, we're still ongoing discussion. Um, yeah, and then the people at the audience, they will have some templates and some cards so they can take notes or and they will have, of course, a digital version of, of those so they can play with this. And the idea is to think, well, first, uh, to let people uh, know that this exists and so on, to have a kind of a guidance, because one of the feedback or part of the feedback we have really received was that, hey, where, where, where can I start here or where, where is the starting point? So I guess that having these templates or cards, is, well, hopefully this, this is something useful for the community. And well, of course, to, to have feedback from, from the audience. So let's see. Hey, welcome, Matt. Hi, everybody. Hi, Matt. I just got done saying uh, I wasn't sure if you were going to make it because you had meetings. I'm here. So I canceled them all for everybody here. So I had already I had already mentioned the uh, the risk work group, but perhaps you could uh, better elaborate on that. Sure. So. Um, so I think as of kind of officially today, we're going to start on the, the risk work group, right? And there's kind of two ways that people have been thinking about risk. One is maybe in the busology, SPDX, you know, license, compliance, IP sort of way. Um, and that's actually what I'm more familiar with. I had done work in both of those communities. Uh, so um, I think that's probably where we're going to 
our first point of entry is going to be. But there were also other discussions about risk at ChaosCon, which was just respect with respect to the way I understood it was with whether or not a project is uh, risky to engage with, irrespective of the licensing or copyright in there. Um, nonetheless, to start, at least my, my first thoughts are ways that we can kind of connect technically, just like the other workers, right? So what are the, the metrics that we're interested in and how can we deploy some of these technically? And I, I think a few, at least from the license and compliance side of things, are technically deployable. I would wonder from a Grimoire Lab perspective as to how technically deployable some of these things would be. So for example, um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the tool Fossology. So it, it used to be a, um, an HP product that they released and now it's an open source project at the Linux Foundation. And um, actually Daniel German, uh, is a contributor to the Phosology project as well. He wrote one of the scanners called Ninka. So anyway, there's a variety of scanners um, underneath the hood of the PHP that is Phosology. And so you can send packages to one of these scanners and they will scan in a variety of ways and return identified license information. So you know, if you're looking for say text in uh, the MIT license that'll report a particular file, as MIT, um, as an MIT declaration. Um, so from, I think from an Augur Labs perspective, that wouldn't be too difficult to take on. Um, there's obviously additional overhead that's incurred by running a scan. So it's, uh, sorry, I'm late. Um, my Linux distro wasn't working with Zoom today, so I had to bike home. <laughs> okay, well, you're obviously close. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, you know, I think there are going to be a few technical issues here. And I, from a Grimoire Lab perspective and maybe at higher level of Baturgia perspective, I don't know if this plays into how you think about projects and how you think about, you know, code bases, if that's ever entered the conversation at all, things like reporting licenses that are evident within a community. It would seem that would be risk related, right? I mean, this yeah, so I'm talking about actually starting the risk working group right mm -hmm. now. So, okay. um, sorry. Oh, Madrika, you unmute before, so you first. Yeah. No, I was trying to say that when, when we started talking about metrics and community analytics, uh, actually, uh, Grimoire was intentionally to bring around activity, performance, and things like this more with community yeah. and the people doing the activity in, in the community. But uh, lately, for example, one of the side projects of one of our personals in, in the company has developed a tool that can integrate the scanners, like the ones you mentioned. Oh, okay. In the tool. So at the commit level, for example, or the activity level, we can also scan things like the code quality or even licensing or, or things like that. So that could be a merge of, of, of the two worlds about, okay, what's going on the community side of, on the mm -hmm. community side of view? I mean, from the people that is doing the, the code and then from the quality of the code and the code itself. But intentionally from the Viterja point of view, we want we didn't want to compete with existing solutions in the market at, at the level of when we started the company because we, we saw that there, there is plenty of them. None of them are 100% accurate. And it was like, okay, another player in the market is like an, an admir for any. And now we are talking with some people in Europe that is trying to do some kind of integration of also these tools and more okay. uh, a dependency analysis, something like that. And it's an interesting topic, of course, taking okay. risk into mind because nowadays people start to think about, okay, you know, an open source office, for example, when I'm taking third party software inside my company, what are the risks I am actually getting with that? Do you have to yeah. know the scanners they're using? I'm sorry, Ray. No, 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 no go ahead. No. Manrique or Danielle, do you happen to know the scanners that are being used? Are they code, like code quality scanners or are they licensed? Scanners? Yes, I'm checking for the, uh, we have written a, a blog post. I am posted on the, I'm going to post it on the chat. Right, that would help. I'll just take a look at it from there. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, Ray? 
Yeah, I mean, my only question is, I guess, I mean, because I mean, I've, I, I think for a lot of the projects when I was at the LF, we use obviously use Fosology, and it'll yeah. basically split out. I mean, spit out and simplistically, like these are the files that's missing license information, as an example, right? right? And, um, but some of them like need like some interpretation because some of those files that does doesn't have any licensing information it's probably because those are like things like jpeg files right mm -hmm. that you wouldn't need license for yep. um so i i guess like i'm somewhat concerned like do we want to just you know spit spit out a raw data on like x percentage of the files in the repo are missing license files or yeah. like yeah yeah but, i mean some of them do require like interpretation like i mean it's maybe it's appropriate they don't have like license information maybe some of these that like, you need to talk to the developers about because they need license files but um yeah like i i, I guess uh, like i'm i'm somewhat like i don't know like manuki i don't know if this is where you're going like integrating like fossology into grimoire lab that seems i'm not sure if that's necessarily like the best thing to do but um because I mean, the, the answers are not going to be black and white necessarily, right? But, no, and neither are yeah. any of the other metric yeah. things either. So I, right. I think in the risk in the risk side of things, what we're at least in my mind just trying to move off zero, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. can we create some transparency when considering a code base and a repository? And I, I totally agree with you, Ray. I mean, yeah. but like the Nomo scanner that's in Physology, mm -hmm. certainly not perfect by any means, right. or as Monk, or as Ninka. I think there are three right. scanners in Pathology. Um, I mean, we could supplement it, but I, right. I think the, the the next B scanner, is it scan code? I think is theirs, their scanner as well. I mean, so there are a lot of options out there, but if, if we can just provide some transparency. And, and you can, like, integrating Pathology is kind of a, you can strip that project way back down to the scanners. So there is a, an incurred overhead <coughs> in the scan, but it really is just an endpoint that you're aiming at to get the data back. And if somebody wanted it, that might be an overhead they're willing to deal with. Yeah, I have posted the, the link to the to the Graal uh, oh, yeah. uh, application that has been, it's a side project from one of our colleagues and actually it was presented by Jesus in the Open uh, Source Summit in Vancouver. Yep. I think it was the last day or something like that. Uh, and one of the scanners that were discussed about the proof of concept about how this could be integrated, I remember it was the one from next week, but I don't I remember the name. Code one. Yep. And, but the idea is to provide some some ways to integrate third party scanners. So it's a proof of concept still, I, I would say. And it's something that probably Jesus and Valerio can give more background about. Okay. What was the, uh, the things that they want to achieve here? But it was more about okay, which code commits are changing, for example, license in the code base, something like that. So you can check okay, what which activity, which people, or which companies are, are doing that kind of stuff. For well, so already this is an interesting conversation because, like, what you just mentioned, Minriki, like which licenses are changing on a particular file or what Ray had mentioned to what is the license coverage? I mean, those are, those are interesting um, metrics, I guess, that are a little bit more granular than things like here are all of the reported licenses as identified by Nomos. So I think that's good from my end. Yeah, because I I think I I think the third one is good too that you mentioned, Matt. Because I mean the project might be like MIT license, and like you don't want to see like LGPL files as an example, right? And mm -hmm. That creates a lot of headache. And then yeah, I think my okay. So these are great. Thank you, everybody. My my biggest concern is clearly the amount of overhead that it takes. Right. Physiology is not fast. Right. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, to because I, I think Matt, you were saying this. You're, I mean, you, you guys are obviously getting things started, right? So maybe yeah. the way to start, like we've done with other, uh, like diversity and inclusion and others, is just define the set of 
like meaningful things that people want to take a look at and how it gets implemented. I mean, that's sort of next level of detail, I guess. But, right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, right. So this is just kind of yeah. getting this off the ground. I think my main my first point of entry on the risk category is this license area. It's one that I'm most familiar with. It's good to hear that something is occurring with Grimoire Lab and Vitergia. I mean, it, it seems like there's, and frankly, I, um, I don't know, is Kate on right now? But Kate um, continues to ask for this point of connection as well, just which I think is a, a fair point of connection between SPDX and pathology. So, so yeah. Matt, is there a repository that uh, this exists in? Like a, in terms well, there's of the broadest level risk repository in chaos. No, but, I mean the, the scanner, the pathology software oh. that you're talking about that runs super slow. Like yeah. the first thing I would do is, I don't know, download the software and run it and see how yeah. badly that hurts. <laughs> Uh, I think scan code's pretty quick. So if you just search on Phosology, it's the first okay. thing you get. It's it's one repo. There's not like it's not like some projects that have eleven repos, and I have to. No, uh, well, that. <laughs> <laughs> so like yeah, like uh, I think I think what would be helpful for at least me and and maybe for the Baturgia folks is sort of a where to begin. Which repos are the ones that are most directly aimed at this compliance of license? issue uh, presumably all of them but maybe i just i'll google phosology and see what well, it looks like i'm just looking right now um the organization of phosology has on their website okay well so oh, here's the, the github org too did you find the github one yeah so that's the uh, organization and i'm guessing the phosology phosology is the main thing right yep exactly all right Okay. And I don't mean to make it sound like it's decrepit I mean, no, or anything. No, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, I, I, I'm an, I would believe that it would take a long time to run just because of what it's trying to do. That, yeah. You give it a big, give it a big yeah. tar DZ and it just takes a while. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. And it's GPL. So, yeah. So both, I guess both just from a, Grimoire Lab and an Augur perspective, just kind of FYI, I might be coming your way <laughs> with risk stuff. Okay. Are you leading the risk group, Matt? I will, yeah. So this is what I'm actually going to talk to Matt Snell about here too today. So the, the student here at the university. Okay. So, so, yep, I will take the lead on that one. So there, there's more information. Uh, all right, so uh, what else? Any updates from, I may have missed a few updates because I heard Danielle talking, but um, uh, I didn't, and I didn't know what the context was. So are there updates that people want to bring forward with respect to Grimoire Lab or Augur software wise? No, okay. I'll just. I mean, um, from from an Augur perspective, I think the main thing that we've been working on is um, getting some people to try out uh, some of the presentations of our Git metrics mining. So, okay, okay. Um, work group updates, GMD or DNI. Anything? So before. Before you joined the call, we oh, uh, had talked about the growth metric decline. No, DNI. We have um, the tutorial at Open Source Summit Europe. Mm -hmm. And so for this tutorial, we are preparing um, just cards and handouts and work materials for the people at the tutorial. But okay. those will then go back into the DNI repository because they will be helpful for communities in general who are interested in creating their own diversity inclusion report. So that's one thing we're working on right now. That'd be great. Okay, that's cool. All right, uh, great. I think there's some changes going on in the GMD 
the growth maturity and decline uh, repository. Is that right? Um, yeah, we're going to move it over to a branch um, of the main metrics repository. We had to talk about that during our last meeting. It'll make it easier to integrate changes going forward. Uh, we did talk through, I think we're going to follow for the conceptually, we're going to follow the structure laid out by diversity and inclusion in terms of goals and use cases, being okay. organizers at the top level. I think, I think Jesus and I and others in the group generally agree that the organizers for growth maturity and decline are, are different because some of the detailed metrics are more well-defined. Yep. So I think we have a, we're probably working from both ends a little bit more than diversity and inclusion because we have, you know, dozens of metrics that already exist in the world and need to be described in a way that is the chaos way um, with all that nuance and, and then built. So we're coming at it from that top down structure as well as from the bottom up. I think okay. that would be the main, that's how I'd characterize the main difference between how those two working groups operate. Okay, that's fair. Um, trying to think anything else. What else do people have? That's helpful. Thanks, Sean. Um, what else? I read a, a blog post yesterday on four different um, perspectives of documentation or four different documentations that any project needs. I'm going to post this real quick. Um, because um, the argument is you cannot just write one documentation, you need all four. And there are tutorial guides, discussions, and technical references. And so I was reflecting on that with regards to the structure we are creating within um, within chaos. And tutorials, this is what Danielle and I are working on for all sorts of material how to guide. That's what we call the resource page. We have discussions, which we have here on this channel, and we have the that reference that is the implementation details that especially in the growth mission decline work group are being worked on in the metric detail pages. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to share the out of this too. I want you to think about this way, and I think we're pretty good on these. That's cool. The link is that pocket. Um, All right. I got a link. So um, let me. Uh, there is original. I'm sorry. I had saved it to my pocket. I'll post the original link here. Okay. It's loading there. Log. Okay. I don't want to hide and log in. Log. Yep. Sorry. Okay. Cool. So is this a similar representation than what you're doing? Um, this just suggesting that there are different use cases for documentation, different types of documentation need for different people for different reasons. And to document a project well, you need all four. And I think we are working on all four fronts within chaos right now. Gotcha. OK. So just to have to go in mind, there's everything that we are doing right now, I think, has its purpose. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Um, so I, I guess a question that came up for me is on the tutorials that you're going to, are they tutorials on how to produce an, a report? Are they tutorials on how to engage? I'm sorry if I missed it when you talked about it earlier. The core idea is to walk people through what steps they have to do to arrive at a report. Okay. And this uh, will include what is your goal for creating a report. Why do you even want to look at diversity and inclusion in this case? And okay. then selecting the metrics that are most meaningful to answer the questions that you have specifically. And then how do you structure that? How do you go about collecting the data, which that part we probably will not be able to go into because we only have 90 minutes, but we'll refer to our repository. Um, that's the structure that we have right now. Okay, I'm that's I'm really excited about that because I think the ability to produce the DNI report is going to be a major, a really nice outcome. Yeah, and use the OpenStack gender report that Daniel helped create as our reference and example okay. that we used to walk people through. That is such a good idea. I mean, it makes me think that it, in the longer 
run, you know, GMD could have a similar output. You want to think about growth maturity and decline. Here's a, a, a way to, to report it out and think about it that way. Because those reports are really cool because they constitute the metrics and the software and the data sources. They're, they're really the, the culmination of everything. They're not just, they're not metric forward. They're not software forward. Um, it's the collection of all, right? Yeah. And so I think it really hones people in on the questions that they're trying to answer. So I'm, if I haven't said this before, I'm really excited about those reports. So thanks for doing that. So these, we don't have examples. We just, this is where you're headed. Well, Daniel has put together an example for the OpenStack. Oh, but they've done this before. And so it sounds like that's the frame that you want to use. Okay. Yep. And the, the key takeaway for me for these people is that they have step-by-step -step instructions on how to get to the report. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. I'll have to think about that in the sense of risk because I really, I like that outcome from these work groups. Yeah. All right, cool. That's awesome. Um, what else, anybody? You might have 30 minutes to go do something else. Oh, just a brief comment. Yeah. Uh, yes, in Europe, we keep looking for places. Oh, yeah. Um, and the question here is, uh, do we want to go over 1,000 euros? And how many people are we expecting to have? Because previous years, I think we had something between 50 and 80 people. So I would say we can expect the same amount of people. And regarding to the place, the point is that as we don't have the EVs, it seems that the prices are a bit higher. But if we go for place for 50 people, then the prices are quite, I mean, even under 500 in a good location. So ideas or limitations? Uh, well, So there were 50 to 80 people in the past, and did those numbers work well? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Well, I mean, I'm always, I'm kind of a, of the ilk of the more the merrier. That's kind of where I go. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that we we do have some funds that we can help offset that the cost mm -hmm. from Google Summer of Code. Okay, so. Um, what what I'm gonna do is to send an email to all of the people that organized the um, uh, previous ChaosCon in North America. Okay. And if any of you would like to be uh, part of this, let me know so I will include include you in in the loop. Okay. And so, was your original question whether we as Chaos are willing to spend more than a thousand to have up to eighty people, or if you want yeah. to cap it at five hundred? euros to have only 50 people yeah kind of a, but the point probably is more about looking for sponsors and so on so i think if we have the likelihood there'll be 80 people we should probably dig deep and sign the funding for that okay. size of a venue so we can bet for that and that's okay so it's just yeah, to I, I think I, that would be my suggestion that we shouldn't okay. limit enthusiasm by dollars right now <laughs> if we don't okay i mean did uh, last in, so in Brussels, we had more than 50 people, right? Like, I mm -hmm. thought it was yeah. closer to 80 versus 50. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah. yeah. And we had 90 mm -hmm. signups for North America. OK. So let's go for those numbers. I, I, I just wanted to have your opinion. So OK. Thank you. 
Just to make it clear, I, I don't know if you can hear me, but uh, yep. from the data point of view, we are going to sponsor the, the event, of course, as we did in Casco North America. And I think the matter that Daniel wants to put on the table is that the same place that we used to have in the past, that is something that was convenient for the name of people, and you can split the room into places so you can have in the afternoon several tutorials running at the same time, is not available anymore. And when, when we are looking for uh, alternatives, we have found that the prices are much higher than the past, uh, or we have a, a small place. Um, I am with you, with most, most of you, that uh, the small place is nice in terms of pricing, but I think it could be could re to reduce in terms of people that could attend to the event based on the previous uh, meetings we already have. Mm -hmm. So we, we keep uh, looking for, for a good place and let's see if we can get something funded. That's it, that's all. Perfect. And you all reminded me, I just literally sent the email to Kate for the email list, chaos-events. So <laughs> I haven't heard back yet. It's been a minute. So yeah, well, <laughs> out I'm of my coin. Yeah. I did my job. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I think on that mailing list, we might want to lock that down, even the archive, because we uh, would share probably lists of attendees and person information and I think we should lock that down. Well, oh, once it gets made. Yeah. That was just the thought I had the other yeah. day. OK. Oh, and by the way, so um, I, I guess I'll just give kudos to Georg for moving us over to the new mail list while I'm on mail list on my brain. You're welcome. So as, as far as I know, that went pretty well. Um, yeah, I had only one person reach out to me when I sent a reminder saying, oh, I thought I was being moved. Thanks for reminding me. So only yep. one person. Well, that's good. So good job. So now we're on just on chaos. So that's good. Yep. All right. Um, well, thanks, everybody. I think this is good. Unless anybody has something burning you want to bring up. Nope. All right. Good. These are these are great. It's good to see everybody again. And I will be chatting soon. All right. Talk to you okay. soon. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye.